Welcome to another episode of the Spaghetti Westerns podcast. Uh, this is season four, episode 13, number 98. I'm going to cover a uh, history of the Spaghetti Westerns on a film that was out in 64, same time as Fistful of Dollars called Two Violent Men. Uh, we're going to talk about Chris Huerta and whatever happened to. Uh, who are those guys? Will be Franco Russell. If you don't know his name, you'll recognize his face. Film of the week is going to be The Ruthless Four. A uh, better grade spaghetti western that isn't covered very often. And then we'll have an autograph of the week, book of the week, uh, CD, and uh, we'll get going and some posters. I've got a couple of posters to show you. So let's get going and we'll talk about history of the spaghetti western and Two Violent Men. Uh, Two Violent Men, Italian title is I Dui Violente. Spanish title is Los Rurales de Texas, and it's got several English titles, the Texas Ranger, Texas Rangers, Two Gunmen, and Two Violent Men. Uh, this was a 1964 Italian-Spanish co-production, uh, PEA out of Rome, and Arturo Gonzalez Producciones out of Madrid. Uh, producers were Alberto Grimaldi, Alfredo Frail, and Arturo Gonzalez. The director is Anthony Greepy, who's actually Primo Zeglio. Story was by Jesus Navarro, who's actually Jesus Carrion. Screenplay was by Federico Fudaro, who's Federico de Uriutia, Manuel Sabaris, and Primo Zeglio. Cinematography was by Alfredo Fraley. It's in Eastman color. Music was by the great Francesco De Masi. And the song in there is by is Red River Valley. There's no credit given to that. Runs 95 minutes. And the leading actors are Cassidy, played by Alan Scott. Ranger Sergeant Matt, or Robert Logan, played by Jorge Martin, which is actually George Martin. Joe Cassidy, played by Alan Scott. Again, I'm, he goes by either name. Moira or Mary Sheridan is played by Susie Anderson. And Linda or Stella Radisson or Ranson is played by Sylvia Soler. Other names you might recognize in the cast are Betty McGregor, played by Paola Barbara. She was the wife of the director, Primo Zeglia. Mortimer, Mortimer played by Jose Jaspi. Uh, Mike Brindell's in it in an uncredited role. Bert or Buck Radisson, Ranson or Radisson, played by Chris Huerta, who we'll cover as one of the uh, main uh, actors in Whatever Happened to. Uh, Carson is played by Aldo Sambrell. Ranger Captain is Jose Nieto. Perkins is Francisco Brana. Uh, it's amazing how many of these early Spanish Westerns uh, George Martin was in. We think of him as coming in later in the genre, but he was in a lot of the early ones. Uh, the story goes as such. Texas Ranger Sergeant Matt uh, Robert Logan, played by Jorge Martin, is put in charge of capturing his friend Cassidy, played by Alan Scott, who has escaped from prison where he was charged with murder. Logan manages to capture Cassidy pretty easy, but on his way back, the two are attacked by the, his henchmen, hired by an unscrupulous landowner named Linda or Stella Radisson, played by Sylvia Solar. Taking advantage of the situation, Cassidy is able to escape again. Intending to obtain evidence of his innocence, Logan, meanwhile, decides to put an end to the criminal activities of Stella and her siblings and goes to their ranch, where he is saved from certain death by the intervention of Cassidy. Together with his friend, Logan engages in a final battle with Ruck, Rad, Buck Radisson gang, who's played by Chris Huerta during which the gang who has caused most of the crimes in the region pay with their lives for their misdeeds, and Cassidy finally proves his innocence. 
on film overview, an early American looking Western based on an often used story of an innocent imprisoned man who escapes and tries to prove his innocence, this time with a ranger friend who joins him in his quest. Together they manage to stamp out a violent gang of outlaws and a crooked land baron, played by a woman for a change. Veteran George Martin, billed as Jorge Martin, is a co-star here and stands out as the unlucky lawman who is unable to keep his prisoner captive through no fault of his own. Amazing how many early Martin was in that we forget about, as I mentioned before. All the main actors are clean-shaven while the only hint of a spaghetti western are the outlaws and the town sets. A gallery of spaghetti western regulars adds quite a bit to the film. Plenty of fistfights, which drags a bit for most viewers. If you like Audie Murphy type Westerns, you'll enjoy this one. Primo Zeglio does an adequate job of directing, but offers nothing new to the viewer we haven't seen before. The musical score by Damasi is reminiscent of The Magnificent Seven, say several viewers, but I don't see or hear it, more like The Glory Guys to me. In actor profiles, we have Ranger Sergeant Matt or Robert Logan, played by Jorge Martin, who's in George Martin, Francisco Martinez Celero, born in 1937, and he died a year ago in 2021. We previously covered him in his own episode number 45. Cassidy is played by Alan Scott. Alan Scott was born on October 13, 1922, in Haydenville, New Jersey. He was a songwriter and presenter moving to France in 1958 and was first seen in the French film of Marcel Carney's entitled Les Chaders. Before he returned to the United States to play with Cary Grant and Tony Curtis in Blake Edwards' Operation Petticoat in 1959. He returned to France where he worked from the beginning of the 1960s until the end of the 1970s in cinema and television, sometimes the Englishman or American in supporting roles. He apparently returned to the United States in the late 1970s and died in Brantford, Connecticut on February 5th, 2021. Now there's some controversy to this and some say that he is not that actor because he was supposedly Australian, but I can find nothing on an Australian named Alan Scott. So we'll go with what I presented at the time being. Moira or Mary Sheridan is played by Susie Anderson. Maria Antoinette Golgi was born on, on April 20th, 1940 in Pola, Istria, Italy. She appeared in only 13 films from 1960 to 1969. Two of those were spaghetti westerns. Then we have Linda or Stella Radisson Ranson, played by Sylvie Solar, who's actually Genevieve Cousin, born in 1940, died in 2011. That's about all I have on her. She was previously covered in episode number six. Okay, we're going to move on to whatever became of Chris Huerta. The Santo. Okay, Crisanto Huerta Brieva was born in Lisbon, Portugal on January 26, 1935 to Spanish parents. Huerta grew up in Madrid and he studied economics before giving up his studies in favor of an acting career. He was one of the busiest character actors of the 1960s and 1970s and worked his way up from uncredited bit parts to co-starring roles, even if usually in low budget films. Huerta made his film debut in the 1961 Italian sword and sandal film, Ursus, as a wrestler. The portly, bearded, and bald actor appeared in more than 135 films, beginning with Sergio Leone's Colossus of Rhodes in 1962. Mainly spaghetti westerns and splitting his time between roles as a sympathetic sidekick of the hero and character roles such as Mexican bandits, bartenders, and sleazy businessmen. In the 70s, Huerta transitioned to playing comedic sidekicks, often named Bud or Buddy, in reference to the heavyset Italian star Bud Spencer of the Trinity movies. He appeared with Ricardo Palacios in The Fabulous Trinity in 1972 in its sequel, Fat Brothers of Trinity in 1972, 
and with others in the Three Musketeers of the West as Portland in Robin Hood, Arrows, Beans, and Karate. With the decline of the spaghetti western genre after 1977, he significantly slowed his activities and turned to television. Chris appeared in 40 spaghetti westerns and one Cemetery Without Crosses as the hotel clerk, where he is often mistakenly miscredited as Sergio Leone. The role was, ser was to be Sergio's, but Leone turned it down and Huerta was given the part. Outside of the Western genre, Huerta's credits include horror entries like Jess Franco's The Diabolical Dr. Z as Dr. Coleman, one of the victims, and Paul Nashie's Howl of the Devil, the German action film Roots of Evil, and Tarzan and the Kiwana Treasure. For Spanish television, he appeared multiple times on the horror anthology Historias para no dormir, first in 1968 and returning in 1982. Later films included the surreal comedy Amaneche Que No Es Poco, 1989, as one of the many wacky townspeople, and the French film The City of Lost Children, 1995, as a priest. He was also billed under various spellings of his name as well as Christopher Harton. Huerto was married to Maria Esoro Parando Garcia and died in Madrid, Spain on November 28, 2004. Some of his better known spaghetti westerns are The Relentless Four in 1965 as Deputy Vince, Seven Guns for the McGregors in 65 as Crawford, Navajo Joe in 66 as El Gordo, as I mentioned before, Cemetery Without Crosses in 1968 as the hotel clerk, Captain Apache in 1970, The Ballad of Ben and Charlie in 71 as the San Diego bank manager, A Town Called Hell in 71 as Gonzalez, uh, The White, the Yellow, and the Black in 74 as Robson or Robinson, a brother, and his last uh, Spaghetti Western was in a TV Sesame Street episode where he plays Dan in 1980. Okay, we're going to move on now to Who Are Those Guys and Franco Russell. Okay, Franco Russell, I don't have much information on him. It's amazing that some of these actors have over 100 credits, either Italian or Spanish, that you can find little or nothing about them in anything online or any of the books I have. But uh, Franco Rossell was born Domenico Orobano in Naples, Campania, Italy, on February 8, 1925. He appeared in more than 140 films and TV series from 1954 to 1985. Among those films were 14 spaghetti westerns. He was a former theater actor with the Pagnanip Ninci Company. He acted with such actors as Salvo Randone, Antonio Guanducio, and Dina Gali, and spent most of the decade of the 1950s on stage. In the 1960s, he made a shift to films and became a great character actor. With that prissy face, he was perfect for playing crooked bankers, crazies, and town bosses. He appeared under such aliases as Walter Frank Russell and Ray Russell. Some of his standout westerns were A Taste of Killing in 1966, The Mercenary in 68, Trinity is Still My Name in 71, and his last western, California, in 1977. His most remembered roles was the at uh, Poi. His most remembered role was probably as the evil Stangle in 1969 Sabata. As the Italian film industry declined, he was seen less and less, but he amassed roles in several TV series before death claimed him on January 14, 1985, at the age of 60. Okay, let's move on to the film of the week. Okay, the film of the week is The Ruthless Four. Uh, the Ruthless Four was a 1967 Italian-German co-production, uh, PCM out of Rome and Eichberg film out of Munich. The Italian title was Ognuno per se, 
The German title was Das Gold von Sam Cooper. English titles were Sam Cooper's Gold, The Gold Seekers, Every Man for Himself, and the USA title, The Ruthless Four. Uh, the director was by George Holloway, who is actually Giorgio Capitani. Story and screenplay were by Fernando De Leo and Augusto Caminito. Cinematography was by Sergio Diofisi. It's in Technicolor and Technoscope. Music was by Carlo Rusticelli with a running time of 106 minutes. Sam Cooper uh, was played by Van Heflin. Gilbert Rowland played the role of Mason. George Hilton plays Manolo Sanchez. And Klaus Kinski plays Brent or Blonde. Uh, other names that you might recognize were Rick Boyd, plays by Hal Brady. And uh, Sergio Dorio plays Fred Brady. Story goes as such. After many years of work, miner Sam Cooper, played by Van Heflin, discovers a gold-bearing vein. Unable to bring all the gold with him, Sam is forced to blow up the mine entrance and return to town. He also has to deal with a crooked partner who tries to steal all of it, and he's buried in the blow up of the mine. After arriving in town, he sends for his godson, Manolo Sanchez, played by George Hilton, and asks him to help him carry out the gold. Manolo comes along with a strange man named Brent, played by Klaus Kinski, that seems to dominate his will. Cooper, will, while not trusting the newcomer, is forced to accept his help. The trio is soon joined by another man, an old ex-friend of Sam's named Mason. The four reach the mine and after days of hard work, recover the gold and start their way back to town. Soon differences begin to surface within the group and the conflict culminates in the death of three of Sam's employees. Soon only Sam reaches town with a load of gold. In a film overview, another small gem of the genre. I remember getting up at two o'clock in the morning on a weeknight week night to watch this on TV. It's the first time I'd seen George Hilton. It's a spaghetti Western take on the treasure of Sierra Madre. Uh, was the relationship between Manolo and Brent a homosexual one or did Manolo just allow Brent to dominate him? Question is asked, but it's never explained. Uh, it's well directed by Giorgio Capistani, Capitani with some clever moments such as a first-class gunfight at the ruins of a monastery as our heroes head off into the desert for the mine. You'll recognize the monastery, monastery as that seen in Death Rides a Horse at the ending. The elaborate pretense that Mason and Brent engage in prior to the shootout is clever. They want to have their guns in hand without the villains noticing that they have drawn them. They rely on sl sleight of hand to remove each other's pistols without attention. This way, Mason and Brent can start blazing away a lot sooner at their ambushers. The unusual relationships that exist between the protagonists generate considerable uh, suspense throughout the film. The Ruthless Four differs from other spaghetti westerns. First, their hero is not a bounty hunter. Second, the protagonist is the oldest of the quartet, and he doesn't wield a six-gun like a wizard. Composer Carlo Rusticelli doesn't provide an operatic Ennio Morricone orchestral soundtrack that's more like a classic score. Uh, Rusticelli doesn't provide an operatic uh, Morricone orchestral soundtrack. Fourth, it's a realistic morality play. The good are rewarded for their virtues, virtues while the evil are punished with death. Meanwhile, it does share some traits with the old Leone Westerns. No one can be trusted. Green is a central theme with paranoia rampant in the relationship among the quartet. Nobody gets out of this gritty odor, odor without catching a bullet. Uh, it has excellent writing, which carries the film with plenty of suspense and just enough gunplay to entertain us. The score is haunting and quite memorable. I remember hearing it played on an L.A. classical music station years ago and immediately remembering where I had heard it before in the Ruthless Core score mine, uh, Ruthless Four mine scene. Uh, this is available on DVD from Germany, France, USA, 
and Spain. Uh, you can get more information on the DVD releases at the Spaghetti Western database. Uh, as far as actor profiles go, Sam Cooper, played by Van Heflin, is Emmett Van Heflin Jr. He was born in Walters, Oklahoma on December 13, 1908. Van was an American theater, radio, and film actor. He played mostly character parts over the course of his film career, but during the 1940s had a string of roles as a leading man. Heflin won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for his performance in Johnny Eager, 1941. Amazingly, he only appeared in 68 films. He was married twice and had three children. Heflin died of a heart attack on July 23, 1971 in Hollywood, California. He was only 62. Western fans will best remember him as Joe Sterrett in 1953 Shane and as Dan Evans in 1957's 310 to Yuma. Uh, Mason was played by Gilbert Rowland. Luis Antonio Damaso de Alonso was born in 1905 and died in 1994. We covered him in his own episode number 92. Manolo Sanchez was played by George Hilton. Jorge Gil Acosta de Ilara was born in 1934 and died in 2019. We covered him in his own episode number 19. And Brent, Brent or Blonde, played by Klaus Kinski. Klaus Gunther Karl Nagasinski was born in 1926, and he died in 1991. We covered him in his own episode in number seven. Okay, uh, let's move along to uh, CD of the week. Okay, CD of the week is a compilation CD called Blood for Macaroni Westerns. Uh, I like this one a lot because it's got some of the uh, compositions that we're familiar with, but they were not found in other soundtracks. Uh, there's various more various composers such as Morricone, Nikolai Damasi, Piccioni, Savina, and Bakalov. This came out of Japan, Japan on Musica. It came out in 2006, uh, number KICP813, has 24 tracks, and it's valued anywhere uh, from 50 bucks to 300 bucks. You can find it on Amazon if you want to buy it. They list it for 737 bucks. Good luck. Uh, probably better to check eBay and see if you can find a collector. Okay, let's move on to uh, Autograph of the Week. Okay, autograph of the week is Tony Anthony and Lloyd Batista. A little backstory on this was I got this at the silent movie theater in LA in 2017, where Tony and Lloyd were present showing a presentation of Get Mean. Afterwards, they had a Q&A session uh, mastered by uh, Rob Word. Uh, then the same presentation went to New York where our friend uh, Tim Ferrante did the question and answer ceremony after the presentation of uh, Get Mean. This was presented by Bill Lustig when they came out on a DVD. So they gave the uh, posters out for free, and then they had a little setup behind the theater where they signed the autographs for everyone after they showed Get Mean. Very nicely done. Okay, uh, let's get on with uh, Book of the Week. Okay, Book of the Week is Der Zweig zum Silbersee, and this was a uh, German book, and it's actually huge. I don't think it's even marked with page numbers. Let's see if I can find anything on here. It's got over 300 pages. It's full of pictures, all kinds of stories, information, and just this one film. I don't know how many of these they did on other. Uh, Carl May films. It's by Schwarzkopf and Schwarzkopf. 
and I don't even see a listing on uh, when it was made. Probably came out at the same time the film came out in the early 70s. But that's our book of the week. I don't know where you could find it other than uh, German eBay or possibly uh, Amazon German, but it's probably worth over 100 bucks if you want to take a look and try and buy it. Okay, uh, next I have some posters for you. Just a couple. I've got the... Yeah, I've got the American Press Book for the Ruthless Four. Like I said before, these are press books handed out to newspapers for printing in their weekly Sunday editions, shows releases of upcoming films. And then I've got the Italian window poster for the Ruthless Four, shows what time and day is going to be shown. Those were stuck in the windows of the theater to advertise it. Okay, last but not least, we have the weekly news. <clears throat> okay, weekly news, and there's not much. Like I mentioned last week, uh, Europe basically takes the month of August off, so there's very little released in the way of films, uh, DVDs, CDs, books, anything else. But there was a new Japanese Blu-ray DVD combo of 1969's Tempo di Massacre, which is The Brute and the Beast, uh, directed by Lucio Fulci and starring Franco Nero, George Hilton, Nino Castanovo. It was released on August 30th, 2022 on Alizo Bunka Shah. And that's basically all the information I have on it. And there wasn't anything else listed in either the Spaghetti Westerns database or at their website. So I don't know if this is a reissue, which most likely could be, but that's the only thing that I've got on it. Okay, that'll wrap it up for uh, this week. But uh, before we leave, don't forget to catch Professor Lampini's podcast of horrors tomorrow at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. This week, uh, Jay and C. Courtney Joyner present the classic films of John Carradine. Okay, that's tomorrow on YouTube and Facebook at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So that's uh, that's it for this week. This has been a Roberto Genesi production, and until next week, adios, amigos.